As South Africans wait with bated breath for the announcement of President Ramaphosa's cabinet, Corruption Watch says it is evident that yet another new era promise in his inauguration speech is off to a rocky start as ANC is far from ending corruption in the country. Now this follows the swearing in of former Minister of Sport, Arts and Culture, Zizi Kordwa, who has been sworn in as ANC Member of Parliament despite facing serious corruption charges for allegedly accepting 1.7 million rand bribe. And to unpack this, I'm joined by CEO of uh, OUTA, and that's Wayne Duvenage. Good afternoon. Glad to have you join me. Yeah, good afternoon. Nice to be with you. All right. Let me start uh, with the recent move by the ANC to bring back to Parliament those, you know, previously charged with corruption uh, allegations. Uh, what does this say, you know, for a party? What does it speak to them as a party? Well, it basically says to us as civil society that the party is not serious about dealing with corruption uh, in government. Uh, Zizi Kodwa has not just been fingered in the Zonda report, but has now had charges laid against him by the National Prosecuting Authority. And, uh, and we believe those charges are very strong. They wouldn't have gone down this road. So he resigned recently. Um, as a minister, uh, acknowledging that he was not fit for this role, and yet he still keeps his name there in the MP list, members of parliament list, and the ANC have uh, have appointed him today uh, into parliament. And we don't believe it's fit to have, or right to have people uh, of this nature serving us in parliament. Um, do you think the ANC can ensure that those reinstated ministers are held accountable for their actions, you know, and also any potential wrongdoing. Well, you see, what will happen is if if uh, Zizi Kodwa uh, is found guilty in the court of law, he's going to have to step down because our laws are quite clear on this matter. Um, but but until then, you know, he's, he, he, the 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 ethics committee within the ANC is certainly not applying a consistency in their step aside rule. Uh, so while legally he's allowed to be an MP. This is a question of ethics and conduct by the uh, ruling party or the then ruling party, now one of the dominant parties in the government of national unity, which is still unfolding right now. So, um, yeah, we've we've got to start holding people to account for this gross maladministration and corruption that takes place uh, ongoingly in, 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 in the public sector in South Africa. And I'm afraid... While we have MPs that are implicated, that there's enough evidence and information out there, although the wheels of justice are turning slowly, it just isn't right. It doesn't taste good for us to have people of this nature involved in such conduct in Parliament. Hmm. I'm happy you touched on something very interesting, which is ethics. I mean, how does this, what does this mean for the ruling party looking away from ethics and also integrity? And then what's the perception of people about this drama unfolding? Well, the perception has been one for a long time. You know, there are so many uh, stories and in the media, credible media, a lot of uh, uh, information put forward about how closely linked some ministers are to the gross maladministration and corruption and inefficiencies uh, in our government. Uh, these are people that are appointed by the president and those people appoint people in senior positions in various departments who have been found wanting. Um, and it, it really does damage the credibility of the ruling party uh, and our government as a whole. And for some strange reason, while the ANC continues to talk about rejuvenating itself and ridding itself of this uh, cloak of corruption, it doesn't seem to be learning much and it doesn't seem to be applying this ethical process of doing its own thorough investigations and removing people that uh, are fingered in, in government uh, in, part, in in corruption and uh, and uh, you know misconduct in South Africa. All right, thank you so much for bringing light to this issue, CEO of Auta Wayne Duvenage. Many thanks once again. Yeah.